Oh, somebody got thank you for doing the transcript. So welcome everybody to the DEI working group meeting on March 27th, 2024. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a light agenda today. I'm facilitating, uh, in case you couldn't tell. And um, <clears throat> does everybody have a link to the minutes available to them? Put that in there. So uh, the first thing on the agenda is thank you to Adinkya. Dinka, um, for being a Badger lead. Dinka, I don't know if you want to tell us what that even means. Elizabeth probably knows better than I do. You're helping us with badging. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much, Sean. Um, so she reached out to me uh, for uh, maintaining the event badging process. And that has to do with um, when events... Um, the event organizers reach out to us to badge their event. Um, the reviewers are to be assigned to this um, event so that they can review the event. And then my own um, role is to then get the results of the review and then assign a badge to the um, to the event. So basically is assigning um, reviewers to the event and then getting the result out. Awesome. Thank you. And um, so thanks for doing that. Really appreciate it. I think Kevin, you, you have an agenda item next under badging. I don't know if you want to lead us through that since I don't know what your words mean specifically. Okay. Uh, so it looks like uh, uh, I'm not sure who updated this here is either Matt or uh, Elizabeth. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, so three three new metrics are being added to the application: uh, event location inclusivity, event accessibility, and public health and safety. Uh, okay. So, I uh, whoever added that, I'm appreciative of that. That was going to be that was one of my concerns that we were kind of uh, stagnant and we weren't adding new metrics. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm not sure where this work was being done or discussed. I can't find any reference to it in the notes below, uh, but apparent it, apparently that's been discussed somewhere else. So, uh. yeah, I think it, I think it came up in a community meeting, and okay. yeah, I, that's I've he actually heard the discussion about changing the event badging process and incorporating more metrics more in the community meeting than I have here, and that's going back actually, okay, to the end of last year that that I heard that discussion. So, so that that's good. The, I'm if I'm that removes some that. of the mit. That removes some of the mystery behind where that came from. Yeah. So uh, that was going to be that was one of my concerns, and that and actually these two of these metrics were a, a part of my recommendation. I was going to recommend adding event location inclusivity and event accessibility to the badging. Uh, so uh, and, and really public health and safety is a good one as well. So those those three in there, good. Uh, but my my primary concern though, so a little bit it was around badging becoming stagnant. Uh, because we've been, we've been measuring the same basic things for, uh, the past three or four years, I guess, uh, yeah, only slightly changing right. it a little bit. Right. So during that time period, and I mentioned this in the community meeting, uh, you know, event badging kind of got disconnected from DEI for a while. And yeah. now, appar now apparently it's kind of reconnected. Yeah. I think so I think, a, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I think I, I mean I'm just giving you the folk history as I recall it here. We we spun off badging into a separate effort primarily because of the review process, and I think I think now that the review process is pretty stable, especially thanks to Adinkia's uh, contribution as a lead, um, the discussions about how it evolves have been happening here, and the operation of it. I guess gets discussed briefly here. And then of course, Elizabeth and Adinkia do these uh, new badger orientations and coordinate the granting of badges. And we've characterized that more as a program. So we've used the word program pretty specifically to indicate that these badges are more than metrics. You can't just run a report and get the information right. It's It requires that peer review, it requires assessment and and so because of that it's it's more than a metric it's less than a whole project i don't know so yeah i and i i agree with that uh but now that uh 
now that we're kind of returning these badging discussions back to the DEI working group, uh, I think it's kind of time to reflect on how the this automated process that we've created is connected to our DEI metrics. And what I've noticed in the current process is that we've kind of become a little disconnected. Uh, so Tell me more about that. Well, so for example, disconnected, we being the DEI event badging or the, we being... the badging questions have been kind of disconnected from the metrics themselves. Right. So, uh, uh, and let me, so let me give you an example and I'll, I'll, let's, can I share my screen? Of, yeah, of course. I just started sharing mine out of like forgetting to, so go for it. Let me know if you don't have permission, you should. Making you co-host just in case. I can never remember how different Zoom accounts work. I can know my university one, I have to make someone co-host for them to share, which was a pain during the pandemic. Okay. Does this work? I see it. I see okay. what you're looking at. All right. So I'm on the uh, event diversity and inclusion page now. Uh, if we take a peek in our chaos metrics, that MD file. These are the these are the five initial metrics that we uh, were connected to the uh, the process. So these haven't okay. been updated in a while. Uh, the Four speaker demographics like. and attendees demographics metric was actually merged together into the the demographics uh, metric. Yeah, that was uh, which recent, means I think I was uh, two years ago. Oh, not that it was a while so. ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, which actually means that the demographics metric is inclusive of both, right? So it's an and there. It's speaker demographics and attendee demographics. Right. Uh, when we, if we go and look at, uh, sorry, we'll jump into the uh, the metrics model, uh, which Kevin, is updated. Kevin, do you uh, know so if that's if that just uh, that differentiate or that merging of those two demographic items is represented on the website? I'm just it is. okay. If we, so if we take it's represented the, accurately or inaccurately. Oh, for the uh, the event de demographic. Are metric? they still? Are they are they separate still? But they no, should be no. The they same. were they were merged into this metric here that I'm pointing at. Event demographics. Just event demographics. Yeah. So if we click on that one, uh, we can get our event demographics, which. Uh, uh, um, so this is attendee and speaker demographics, right? Yep, yep. So, and the, the keyword here, or the, the thing to focus on, I think for me, one of the problems is that the, this and is kind of important. Uh, our measure, our measure in the, uh, in the badging is more of an or, an attendee or, uh, at least that's the way we've been grading it. Uh, and maybe okay. it's because we're not clear in the questions or maybe it's because we are maybe a little too uh accepting in the responses we're getting uh but the uh the information we're getting or collecting around event demographics is basically just tracking attendee demographics uh and we're not really uh dealing with or i'm sorry not attendee uh it's dealing with speaker demographics and attendee and volunteer demographics uh, are not as common for uh, uh, a lot of our uh, applicants. Projects. Go ahead. Sorry, are you, you have your hand up? Yeah, I, I just want jumping back real quick. You started with the um, you started with the the GitHub site, and I'm my, I just have a clarifying question: Is the canonical truth the website right now, though? So, in other words, if this must not be in whatever it is we use to eat in eat metrics in from the GitHub site. And so I guess my question is, does is it the fact that this is out of date something we just need to clean this up and have this not be here? Well, um, I think it's a it, because it's I know we try to have canonical truth in one place. Yeah. So the canonical truth, you're you're right. So the the canonical truth should be on the website, right? But the website does pull that information from uh from GitHub. 
Uh, but not from this page, apparently. Not from this page. <laughs> but but this repository is where our event badging process yeah. is located, right? So right, if I go yeah. to the issues and this is where we are, this is where we are doing the event badging work. So, so uh, this think, is just uh, a, I would say this I is a, a symptom of the disconnect. Uh, and not a question a, for Adinka. Not a huge problem. Adinka, when you, when you do badging, like issue a badge, do you look at this list here? Or do you look at a different list in the badging process? So there is a list, a checklist that has been created that the badging bot automatically um, displays on the repo. So the badging reviewer just looks through this checklist okay. and um, yes, check whether um, the event meets that criteria or not. So once you meet the criteria, then we, we mark it. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, I know, okay. So you don't actually, I, I guess, okay. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm causing confusion now because I think that we just have a ghost page in the repository that's not what people look at. And Kevin, your point is that these questions don't map quite so neatly to the metrics that, are, that and, exist, right? And I was going to go there next. I was just kind of okay. building up no, the I'm, case that we've become detached. So the yeah, yeah. that, that oh, ghost page that you're out. talking yeah. about is a it's a minor issue. It's not yeah. it's not terribly important to easy to fix. Okay. Uh, but you'll notice that the uh, those metrics don't match up with what's in the uh, sorry the on the web page metrics model either, right? So time inclusion for virtual events, we're not measuring that. Uh, we did define that as part of the model as well. Uh, if but we take when a, you're doing badging, do you look at the metrics model or you just look at the checklist? Just the checklist. Yeah. I'm just wondering, Kevin, if the metric model is um, not necessarily intended to map to the actual badging program. Although, what does the metric say above there? Does it say badging in the name of the metric? I can't see. Uh, DEI event badging. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this should align, even if it doesn't look yeah. at it. So my my kind of my overarching yeah. my overarching point is that we've kind of over time we've become detached from the from mm -hmm. the metrics model and our DEI metrics that we've defined in this working group and the mm -hmm. badging process. Right. So it's it 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 happens because we. We kind of separated for a bit and then we built the application and ironed out the autom automation. It's okay. It's not a, uh, it's just, I think now it's time to, as, uh, as a working group, I think it's time to reflect on how we can make sure that they are better connected. Sure. Uh, I, I, th and then, I think it's, if you go back to the checklist, um, for example, under demographics, the, a lot of the questions that I noticed there are ones that have emerged in the very recent past as we've been discussing. Uh, for example, the Linux Foundation has chosen not to collect demographics, right? And so we've included some opt-out language in there that did not used to be there. And I'm sh I suspect that we only updated uh, this, this checklist, that it didn't filter back to the other artifacts that you're talking about. And I think what you're suggesting is looking at this checklist since that's kind of the truth and ensuring that the facts in here are represented in the metrics and the metrics models that live downstream from it. Yeah, so there should be a explicit upstream, question. <laughs> there should be an explicit question about speaker demographics. There should be an explicit question about attendee demographics. Uh, I like the, the opt-out is wait good. Minute, there should, wait a minute, there should be or there, because the... I think there should be. So we should... Uh, if even, we, even though it's just event demographics, so if we are, so if we just ask about measuring event demographics in general, then if they're looking right. at their, if they're, if they do collect speaker demographics, then they can say yes, we do this. Uh, however, the metric as defined is an and; it's not an or, right? So it's speaker demographics and attendee demographics. It's not speaker demographics or attendee demographics. 
the way we add, the way the, the way we ask this and the way we badge it and the way we check mark it is if they do one of those two things, then yes, we'll we'll do the check mark, right? So what right. I'm saying is in our question here, we need to kind of explicitly ask about speaker demographics. And then we need to explicitly ask about attendee demographics. And then the opt-out question's good. Uh, and then I think we also need to address things that aren't necessarily demographics that are getting confused as demographics. For example, uh, accessibility questions around disabilities. That's not really a demographics question. Uh, that's more of a, an accessibility question where if you, uh, where we need to provide uh, certain uh, certain things for you if you if you uh, if you need it as part of like ADA or whatever, uh, and that and questions like that would actually be more in line with inclusive experience at an event, right? Where we do talk about accessibility uh, for people with uh, disabilities down here, uh, and then with event demographics, there's also an issue of organizational demographics which all of the conferences are collecting organizational demographics information uh, and there's no opt out on that. Uh, so you have to you have to tell them what who you work for and uh, things of that nature. All right. So that's not addressed yeah. in the that's not addressed. None of that is really addressed in the event demographics question. Is so the, what's the I action the item? Yeah. So what's I guess which direction? It sounds like is are you involved? Would you be interested in uh, helping to reconcile <laughs> these uh, yes, things? Yes, I, I can. I can do that. I just wanted to make sure that I was welcome to do that. So it's. Uh, I've, I've. I don't know what, what do people think. So I will say there are there are other issues as we go down as well. Uh, so the inclusive experience that, at event is a weird metric. Uh, yeah. that should probably actually be a model and it's really poorly defined in our working group. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it would be, I think getting that alignment certainly will make it easier for others who come to chaos that try to look at our different artifacts to see the relationship between them. It, it does seem like there's some drift between the checklist and the underlying metrics and metrics models. Um, and so from my perspective, having them aligned again, makes sense. I certainly understand how, a uh, we were certainly writing metrics that today we would call metrics models two years ago. And so I understand how what you're describing in the last case came to be. Yeah, and there's no there's no recriminations here. Like we uh I think the the, the badging people are doing a wonderful job and the, the working group is doing a wonderful job. It's just a matter of we've been doing this for a while, and because we've been doing it for a while, uh we need to reflect we need to take a moment and reflect on the process again and and uh, try to strengthen the connection and maybe tidy up some of our metrics and and, and models that we have. Uh, I think, I think that's true maybe, in general. I think maybe because, because Kevin, what uh, a lot of the things that you're proposing are uh, relatively big changes and that's a lot of stuff. I think it might help if you put together a doc with like a proposal um, oh. of Exactly That's a good idea. What, what you think we should change and then that might and then we could kind of circle that around for because you know some of the people that are deeply involved in the badging like matt and elizabeth aren't aren't here and so we want them involved in in those discussions and i think it'll be easier if we have like a proposal of what to change um for us for us to review but i mean i think I don't know. I think it's always a good idea to take another look at at some of these things and do a do a refresh. And like you said, you know, some of our some of the early metrics that were defined really are more like metrics models, like this inclusivity one that's really, really too complex for a single metric. Metric. Yeah. Um, and what what are the pieces of that that we thought were really important? And maybe maybe we need to redefine or define some new metrics. Um, and put them together into a metrics model, which is our, you know, like our canonical one that we use for the for the badging. I mean, it just feels like there's a lot of a lot of stuff that it might help if you kind of unpack that and bring it back. So we do have one of the uh, the that note that was added to the uh, the document today that we're adding uh, event accessibility. So that mm -hmm. that metric is actually a component of, or it could be, I should say, it could be 
a component of inclusive experiences at event. It is not written that way currently, uh, but the but the metric itself would fit in this section. Uh, and the uh, uh, the other one, uh, event location inclusivity, would fit in there as well. And, and I think Kevin, you can create like I think just a simple table of you know here's the checklist. Here's the metrics definition. Here are the metrics models definitions. Here's where we're, you know, there's lack of alignment across this spectrum. Like, I don't think you need to do like a five page report um, because I think the lack of alignment is fairly clear. I think it's not a mystery that it's, that thank we've drifted you. a little bit. Thank you for saying that. Cause I, I have, I do feel like I've kind of been getting some pushback on this. Yeah, uh, I mean, thanks. I think honestly, some of the pushback is, is less pushback and more not understanding exactly exactly what you'd like to change. And I think having a concrete proposal would, I think, make the discussions a little more productive. I mean, maybe there's been some pushback. I don't want to say that there hasn't been. Um, it just felt yeah, I, like people just didn't understand what you wanted to change. And I feel like if they understand what you're trying to change, they might be more they might, there might be less pushback if they have a better understanding. The, the pattern I see executed is just, I agree with Don, and the pattern I see that's happened here is, as we organizationally, there's a certain amount of work and responsibility associated with badging the events. And we have focused on this checklist to keep it current because that optimizes operational efficiency for that task. And we've just given less time and effort to ensuring this checklist is well aligned with the underlying metrics and metrics models. So it conceptually, I, I completely can follow the pattern that occurred here. Uh -huh. um, and I think Don's right. If you just put together a, a proposal that demystifies what you're talking about, so it doesn't hit people who have maintained these lists as you want to change everything we just did. <laughs> if you can avoid that uh, angle of attack, I think that's good. Okay, well, I will. Uh, I will try to put together a uh, a document outlining this. Awesome. Uh, or outlining the changes. Uh, yeah. And I will make it inclusive of the. Uh, uh, so I, I actually might need to talk to. I probably do need to talk to uh, Matt and Elizabeth about this because they do have changes that they are planning. Uh, I suppose the those three new metrics and the change that they've made to the demographics question. So uh, yeah. I don't know if I do I need should maybe I should wait until they're done and then make my proposal or try to coordinate with them so that it happens all at the same time. Uh, uh -oh. and, I'll leave, I'll leave that to you. Um, I th I don't know what the intentional time frame is for the implementation of those three new metrics. I think it will depend on lots of factors I can't possibly identify. <laughs> so if we're good with that, we could, uh, anything else you want to talk about on this topic, Kevin? Uh, maybe we can add an agenda to the next meeting so that I can repeat what sure. I just said to uh, Matt and Elizabeth if they show up. All right. Yeah, as long as you do it in less time. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right, so uh, should I take control back? All right. So next on the agenda are predefined issue PR templates and badging. I don't know who put this here. Anybody on the call create this item? I did. Arienka. Oh, great. Yes. Somebody yes. can lead us through it and I don't have to make stuff up. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this is um, re regarding uh, issues that we create on our budget projects, the budget API, and then the budget website itself. So I noticed when I was reviewing um, some of the pull requests and the issues that we don't have a structure for issue reporting and pull requests. And um, that means that when issues are created by people, new contributors or even um, usual contributors just come to the comment session and say, um, explain more 
uh, what's the context. So um, I decided to create um, issue templates to help oh, awesome. encourage people yeah to be able to so so you can just click on the issue the issues which, which so issue? new no 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 oh, create new a new issue, issue. okay so oh, you, nice. you can see yeah yeah this is, so, so this didn't report. exist before mm -hmm. thank you for doing this this makes life a lot easier when these templates exist Yes. So then direction on what is expected from the contributor. Mm -hmm. But um, another thing that I really want us to take note is I had to disable the um, create blank issue. So for instance, if the contributor doesn't see anyone that fits into what he wants to create for instance probably he wants to create an issue that does not have to do with bug reporting or documentation or even a new future request then um they wouldn't be able to do any other thing so i wanted to ask the group um what more topics comes to mind that we can actually add to the um predefined request I think mm -hmm. I don't I th I think the three templates you have are reasonable and not having a blank one is okay because as I just demonstrated I was able to delete all of the template and just put in whatever I wanted and that's mm -hmm. like if, if it doesn't fit that's what people are going to do honestly in okay. my experience I don't know okay. if John has different experience than that but well there's usually a, can you go back to the create a new yeah. issue yeah. Bit. Yeah. Um, so like like um, i said yeah, I usually just... usually there's a usually there's a link at the bottom that says create a blank yes blank. like i said i disabled it so that people oh, can okay. um be forced in quotes or let me say encouraged <laughs> uh, <laughs> they can encouraged. be encouraged i like that better use... <laughs> <laughs> to use one of the three and um Again, probably we are going to include that in the contributed on dot MD that um, it will be very nice for contributors to actually follow the template so that people can understand the issues quicker. Okay. Um, I guess I have mixed feelings about that. The the create a new one without any of this is, is such a tiny link at the bottom that I feel I feel like it still should be there because I um so th there are a couple of things uh one uh can you click on the bug report for feedback yeah. ever any sure. any of them because one of the things Oops, that, hang on uh, it uh kept my old okay because the thing know. is if, if no just leave it it's fine it's fine just leave okay. that if somebody all right. deletes all of that it still gets the label for for oh, the, that's true check it out um, yeah that's fair. so so it gets an erroneous mm -hmm. label if they delete everything out of the template and just just use it. Um, so I, I think it's, I, here's, here's what I would do, Adinka. I would, okay. I would um, leave the blank template as, as the link, teeny tiny link at the bottom that people can choose to use. And then if you, if you start to see people abusing that and using it too much when they should be using one of the others, then let's disable it. Okay, because that was what happened for the budget web website. We created um, templates like this for the budget website, and people were not using it. Oh, that was why I even <laughs> that was uh, why I even thought to disable in the first place for for budget. Yeah, <laughs> but again, okay, probably okay, okay. So this has been a this has been an ongoing problem with your your audience say um okay then let's leave it disabled that's fine let's let's just let's just go with that because you know more about the the people who are likely to file bugs and if you think that they're not going to use the the templates the way that they should let's let's try it with this let's try it without the without the blank issue and and see if people complain okay okay no problem thank you yeah yeah this is, this is great work thank thank you so much for doing this and thanks for adding the labels thank you. i that's one thank of the you. things that People tend to forget when they create the issue templates. Yeah, templates are Thank great. They're, Super helpful. They, yes, extremely helpful. All right, the last item on the 
agenda so far is, um, wait a minute, did I skip over New Badger orientation? Maybe I did. We got New Badger orientation April 2nd at 7.30 a.m. We just discussed the issue templates. There is no other item on the agenda. Anything anyone want to bring up while we're here? Anybody want time back? Never complain about time back. All right. Well, I will. I will maintain the popularity contest and give you time back. <laughs> uh, and there we go. I All think a right. uh, great meeting, everyone. Thank you, Sean. Very efficient. Very Good nice to see you, you, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, Don. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.